Kimmy Warner is well known as an elite skin diver. Her affinity for the ocean comes from the time she spent as a kid, fishing with her dad, Chris. Nice shoes. Thank you. They, uh, They're fancy. They drain nicely. <laughs> on one of her frequent trips back home to Maui, she spent a day on her dad's boat, fishing for Nabeta, just like the good old days. So you know these hooks? How come there's three? Oh, I thought I'd upgrade you. There's only two. Oh, okay. And guess how many I got? How many? Five. Huh. <laughs> so this is my favorite way to fish. It's a homemade hand line that my dad made for me. So when I was eight years old on Christmas morning, one day I woke up and there is this present very sloppily wrapped underneath the tree and I got to open it and um, and it was my very first homemade hand line and he had engraved my name in it and I grabbed the hand line and I ran out of the house crying and I remember my dad came running after me and asked me what was wrong <laughs> and as I was wiping the tears away from my eyes I just told him that I was just so happy and, um, and we just started laughing. And um, so I used that hand line pretty much my, my whole life growing up on Maui, fishing with my dad. Since then, he's upgraded to fishing poles, um, but he just, this year, made me, made me my own hand line again, and, um, and I'd like to stick with this setup. <laughs> it's sentimental to me. I thought we need to go way up over there. No. No, no, never. Yes, yes, oh, I remember. <laughs> you don't remember. No, this is where we always come. You were so little the last time no. you were with me. You probably couldn't see over the edge of the boat. Yeah, right. All righty. Good luck. You don't get any more unless you catch a fish. Huh. I like how you give me the scrappy pieces. <laughs> That's a good spot. This is about the fourth time for this setup. Okay. You down? Let's see if I remember how. My line is going under the boat, Dad. Ah. Uh, switch sides. I will. Yeah. Yeah, the wind's gonna come up quick. And we're drifting that way. Huh? We're drifting. The torch kind of falling. I know. Well, we'll go until it gets sloppy, and then we'll turn around. We're drifting out towards Lanai, too, which is not good. Well, the one good thing is we're moving. Mm hmm And then when you're good, you know, you hook fish. <laughs> <laughs> Kimmy, you didn't think you were going to beat me, did you? I'm just letting you get the first one, so get some confidence. Now, let's see if it's not better. It could be a hoggy. Could be a hoggy. Not better. Got one, Dad? Of course. Or do you I have me? I got your line, too. Good yeah, job. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have to fish on the other side. Okay. Okay, let me go. Okay, you're free. Okay. And 
<laughs> one for dad, zero for Kim. It probably bit because I was jigging it for oh. you. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, perfect size. See, not swallowed. The sign of a professional. Okay. <clears throat> You should have brought your stuff. You could go down and poke one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna catch two now. Yeah, right. Do you have one on? Of course. No, yeah. you don't. Is the elephant heavy? No, you don't. Uh, okay, I better one in the boat's better than two in the water, huh? <laughs> Do we have each other? Uh, I don't know. I got a fish, so. I. Do you feel, feel me like pulling you? No. This one's kind of pulling. It's either a big nabetta or a hoggy. Because um, I got a fish. You got one, Cammy. You got a hoggy, huh? Nope. Oh, nabetta. Nabetta. <laughs> Two, one, Dad, Kimmy. Do you think so? Yeah. I think it's uh, four, because I got tired of just catching one. <laughs> These fish will actually turn and try and bite. Yeah, they do, and they bite hard. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey off the back. That little girl good. No, no more white horse. No. Where is my hook? At? There we go. Okay, now that I remember what it feels like, <laughs> now I'm back in the game. Next on Hawaii Goes Fishing, the bite is still on. This portion of Hawaii Goes Fishing is brought to you by Vacations Hawaii, your nonstop Vegas connection. Champion free diver Kimmy Warner is visiting with her dad Chris on Maui, and the two of them are out fishing for Nobeto, just like they did when Kimmy was just a little kid. Chris Warner and his daughter Kimmy are fishing in one of their favorite spots, and they already have a few Nobeta in the boat. Nabeta is also known as a razor wrasse. It's highly prized among those who know about its unique culinary value. It became a favorite fish for Chris and his family almost by accident. We would come out here when the North Shore was rough and just bottom fish around and then uh, I caught one and I was gonna throw it back and the, my friend said, no, that's a really good fish. And I, you know, I, we went home and ate and it was so good that uh, I started targeting that fish. I had some really good teachers. This one guy, Shigi Tanaka, I, I think he's probably one of the best on Maui. We used to use hand lines like him, but now we both use poles. <laughs> A lot of people don't even know what, what nabeta is. Um, I have a lot of friends who eat fish, but they've never heard of a nabeta, and I think it's because it's a fish that rarely even makes it to the market because the people who catch it, the fishermen who go fishing, if they catch nabeta, they know how good it is and they want to take it home for their families. And so you'll rarely see it in the markets. And, and I think that's why I'd say the majority of people who eat fish don't even know what a nabeta is. Well, you got a bite, huh? Maybe, I <laughs> something. A nibble. It looks like the wind's laying down a little bit. Fishy, fishy, it's not a bad drift. Oh. You got a bite? A nibble. I wasn't ready for it. Oh, my. Oh, did I get one already? I'm no, you don't. I'll go for two. Fishy, fishy. Oh, I might have lost that one. Oh, that's what happens when you get greedy. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I got one. You got one, Cam? No. You got a bite? Not yet. Probably you gave me the scrappy pieces of bait. <laughs> no, have you can have any piece of bait you want. This one feels a little heavy, it might be. It's a hoggy. That means we're on a reef. A little baby hoggy. We got the toughest lips. There he goes. As a little girl, Kimmy was taught to fish with a hand line, and she still prefers to fish with one today. I like to just drop it down to the bottom, and once I hit the bottom, then I kind of let my lead tap, bounce on the sand a few times, and then I kind of do these long, slow pulls so that I can really feel the line between my fingers so that if there's any little nibble along the way then you kind of just jerk it to set the hook and start bringing your fish up. You get a little bite that I think they're Moana. You want a water, Kim? Sure. Little nibbles, yeah, Dad. Yeah, you know, I think they're Moana. The thing about Moana, you can have one on and, and think, then an uku think you're getting little bites and they're just a little Moana. But it could bring a uku around, although our hooks are... Remember right the time I there. caught that huge taco? Well, yeah, you could catch taco. That's a lot of fun. Sometimes they pull up nice taco out here. You gotta be real careful you don't let them grab the side of the boat. <laughs> He's on. That must have been the one that you were getting a bite from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not better. <clears throat> Once again, didn't swallow. <clears throat> you want to train setups, Kimmy? Nope. Your bait is really beat up, Dad. Yeah, it's old bait, but I'm an old guy. I'm going to just cut it off at 10, and then I'll switch to a hand line, too. <laughs> Sounds good. Pull up. What do I think? Yeah. Yeah, I think we got enough for dinner. Yeah. It's not gonna get any calmer. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I have to admit, this hand line brings back memories. Doesn't it? Uh, yeah, See? it does. Maybe tomorrow I'll just fish with the hand line. You should. <laughs> Next on Hawaii Goes Fishing, Kimmy and Chris Warner cook what they caught. In today's real recipe, Kimmy Warner and her family prepare the nabeta they caught earlier in the show. So Christy, are you sad you didn't come fishing with Dad and I today? No, I would have just fallen asleep. There was a nice place on the front of the boat for you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, actually the hand line did bring back memories. Me and Kim traded. Oh, you used the hand line? Uh, at the end. Because <laughs> uh, I tangled it and so I gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. So you had to untangle it for you? It was easy. Sometimes I go back into little girl mode when I'm with Dad. You know, to look at this fish, you wouldn't think it was as, it's as good as it is. Yeah, it definitely um, doesn't have the same appetizing appeal that like an uku or something right. might have, but that's fine with me because it still tastes good. 
And the best thing about it is um, how easy it is to clean. Yeah. Because you only have to gut it. If you, if you scale it, you're ruining the whole fish. Very few people know about Nabitta. People keep it a secret. They don't sell it to the markets. Uh, the only time they ever sell it to the market is when they have too much for them, for themselves. Or the fish is big. They don't like the big ones at the market. Did you see the plate that I chose out? Our family fishing plate <laughs> that I made when I was eight years old? Yeah. There's you. I know. And naturally, you're the one that had to catch a fish. Yes. <laughs> and Dad's standing behind me watching. Yeah, here's, here's the <laughs> Nabetican painted for me. She knows that it, I like this fish, so. Okay, so the fish is... So basically we just have some fresh kale from our neighbor Lauren and um, mom just fries up the nabetta in her cast iron skillet in oil and she likes to make sure that she fries it really well where the scales which we leave on, they'll all crisp up. It kind of becomes like the chicken skin of fish. It's just crunchy and crispy and salty and so it's kind of the best part and we're just going to serve it over kale with um, lemon shoyu chili pepper sauce that we always put on it. Sometimes when the fish is this good you really don't want to do too much to it. But this fish is pretty. Yeah, I like the salt inside of the belly because then the flavor permeates the salt flavor. And that's about all the seasoning you need on it, just salt and pepper. Now just wait for the, waiting for the oil to get hot enough. Looks perfect, Mom. Maybe we'll put two on this plate. Mm -hmm. Let's put one this way, one this really? way. <laughs> How about like that, Christy? That no. Works for you? Like that? No. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> Just go one, two, three. We still <laughs> put three fish the whole way through. Okay, fine. <laughs> like that, Christy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. that looks pretty. And you can spoon your sauce over it. This is just homemade pickled ginger. Just to add yeah, some color yeah, to yeah. our oh, plate. Sure. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. No better art. So mom's going to make us all eat this right away because she doesn't want her crispy skin to go soggy on us. Christy, want to try a bite? <laughs> sure. Since I, know how much. I love Nabetta. I can't wait to have a bite. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> and then handle it and do it. There's a Luna. Mm. Yeah, we do have guests here. Very good. You have to come eat this. It just it just forms a nice um. Like, I, mean, I don't know how to describe it except like chicken skin, fried chicken. And you can eat the entire tail. Yeah, you totally can eat the tail. And you can hear, Mom, how crispy it is, so the sauce didn't ruin it yet. Yes. Too fast. <laughs> Good sauce. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, no. <laughs> when we get back, fishermen get a little extra insurance with an annual blessing.